The year is 2026. The line between humans and machines has never been thinner. You walk through an airport and a smiling receptionist greets you, but she isn't human. She blinks, talks, and even reacts to your tone. Yet behind the perfect smile is a machine. For decades, people thought robots like this belonged only in movies, but today, they are here. And the bigger question is this, in a world where robots look, feel, and act like us, will they start to replace us? Think about how fast technology has changed in your own lifetime. In the early 2000s, most of us were just getting used to flip phones. By 2010, smartphones ruled our lives. By 2020, artificial intelligence was writing stories, diagnosing illnesses, and driving cars. Now in 2026, we are staring at a new leap. Realistic humanoid robots. Machines so advanced that they can copy our gestures, mimic our emotions, and even hold conversations that feel real. In this video, we will pull back the curtain. You'll see which countries are leading the race, how these humanoids are built, where they'll be used, and the uncomfortable truth about how they might replace real people. But that's not all. At the end, we'll face the toughest question of all. If robots can do everything humans can, what's left that makes us truly human? When it comes to humanoid robots in 2026, one thing is clear. This is not a local race. It is global. Nations are pouring billions into research, startups are sprouting like wildfire, and governments see robotics as the next big battlefield for power and influence. The stakes are enormous. Whoever leads in realistic humanoid technology may also lead in the future economy, defense, and even culture. Japan has been at the forefront for decades, long before the rest of the world even thought about lifelike robots. Japanese engineers were building machines that could bow, smile, and mimic polite conversation. Hiroshi Ishiguro's laboratory stunned the world by creating robots that looked almost identical to real people, even copies of himself. Companies like Honda built the famous Asimo, a robot that could walk upstairs and carry objects. SoftBank Robotics introduced Pepper, a robot robot that could recognize human emotions and hold simple conversations. These weren't just machines, they were cultural ambassadors. Japan showed the world what was possible. South Korea followed closely behind. Hanson Robotics made headlines when they unveiled Sophia, a robot that could smile, joke, and even hold interviews on television. Sophia became a global icon, sparking debates about the future of human-robot relationships. While many dismissed her as a gimmick, her ability to mimic emotions and respond in real time showed just how far the technology had advanced. Meanwhile, the United States took a different path. Instead of focusing on appearances, companies like Boston Dynamics pushed the limits of motion. Their robots ran, jumped, and performed backflips with uncanny precision. Tesla entered the field with its humanoid project, promising a future workforce of tireless, obedient machines. Google and other tech giants invested heavily in AI, giving robots the brains to match their bodies. America's focus has been less about making robots look human and more about making them move and think like one. And then there is China. In the last five years, China has surged ahead at breathtaking speed. Dozens of startups, backed by government funding are racing to build humanoids that are not only realistic but also affordable. China understands that whoever controls mass production will control the market. Already, exhibitions in Shanghai and Beijing showcase robots that can dance, answer questions, and even perform customer service. While Japan, South Korea, and the US built the foundation, China is scaling it up. What we are witnessing is nothing less than a robot arms race, and the finish line isn't decades away. It may be here within the next few years. If you've ever looked at a humanoid robot and thought, that looks disturbingly real, it's because building one is part science, part art, and part illusion. Creating a machine that not only moves like a human but also looks, feels, and even sounds alive is one of the most complex engineering challenges of our time. Let's peel back the layers and see how it's done. The first thing you notice is the skin. It's not just a rubber mask. Engineers use multi-layer silicone that mimics the stretch, softness, and slight translucence of human flesh. Pigments are carefully mixed into the silicone to create realistic tones. Tiny details like freckles, veins, and subtle discoloration are added by hand. Some robots even get hair implanted strand by strand, just like a wig maker or surgeon would do. The goal is to trick the human eye into believing this is skin, not plastic. Underneath the skin lies the skeleton. Unlike humans, robots don't have bones and muscles, but they do have frames and actuators. These frames are built from lightweight metals, plastics, or carbon fiber. Tiny servo motors pull cables that act like artificial muscles. Hydraulics and pneumatics provide stronger movements, giving robots the ability to lift, bend, and walk with balance. The challenge is packing all of this into a body that looks proportionate and natural, without wires hanging out or clunky parts breaking the illusion. But a body is nothing without expression. That's where robotics meets AI. Cameras in the eyes capture faces and environments, feeding the information into machine learning systems. This allows the robot to detect emotions, 
expressions, whether someone is smiling, frowning, or confused, and respond appropriately. Software controls micromotors beneath the silicone skin, pulling it into subtle facial expressions. A slight raise of the eyebrow, a twitch of the lip, or a narrowing of the eyes, all of these can be programmed to replicate human emotion. One of the most fascinating techniques is human scanning. Engineers can now map a person's face in 3D, record their voice, and study their gestures. This data can then be embedded into a robot that looks, sounds, and moves almost exactly like the original human. Imagine meeting a machine that perfectly mirrors your friend, or even a younger version of yourself. It's both impressive and unsettling. All these pieces, skin, skeleton, AI, and scanning, combine to create humanoids that no longer feel like machines. They feel like something more, something hovering on the edge of human and artificial. And as this technology improves, the line between the two keeps fading. Soon, the question won't be whether a robot looks real. The real question will be whether you can tell the difference at all. When most people think of robots, they imagine them stuck in factories, welding cars, or assembling electronics. But humanoids are designed for something far more personal. Their real purpose is to step into human spaces, to do human tasks, and sometimes to fill human roles. The list of possible uses is long, and it's growing faster than we realize. One of the biggest areas is elderly care. Across North America, Europe, and Asia, populations are aging. Nursing homes and families struggle to find enough caregivers. Robots could fill this gap. Imagine a humanoid robot that can gently help a senior stand up, remind them to take their medication, or simply sit and chat when no one else is around. These machines don't get tired, they don't lose patience, and they can monitor health data in real time. For families living far from their loved ones, that peace of mind could be priceless. Another powerful role is in supporting children with autism. Studies already show that many autistic kids respond better to robots than to human teachers. The reason is simple. Robots are consistent. They don't get frustrated. They repeat instructions the same way every time. A humanoid tutor could adapt to a child's learning pace, providing encouragement and structured interaction that feels safe and predictable. Education more broadly is another frontier. Imagine classrooms where humanoid tutors work alongside human teachers. These robots could track each student's progress individually, offering one-on-one -on -one help without slowing down the whole class. They could even read facial expressions, noticing when a child looks confused, and adjust the lesson instantly. The big question question, of course, is whether they can ever replace the empathy of a real teacher. But as assistants, they could be game changers. Public spaces will see them too. Airports, malls, and hotels are already experimenting with humanoid robots as concierges and guides. Instead of asking a stranger for directions, you might soon approach a smiling robot that can speak multiple languages, print your boarding pass, and walk you to your gate. In busy environments where customer service often feels rushed, a robot could provide patient, personalized help. Entertainment is another area most people overlook. Filmmakers already use robots Robots for stunts that are too dangerous for humans. Imagine theater performances where humanoid actors share the stage with people, or theme parks where robots create lifelike experiences for visitors. These aren't just gimmicks, they reduce risk and expand creative possibilities. And then there's companionship. This is the most controversial use, but also the most inevitable. Humanoid robots designed as emotional partners are already being sold. They listen, respond, and adapt to their owner's moods. For people who are lonely, grieving, or isolated, that kind of presence can mean everything. Some see this as dangerous arguing it replaces real human connection. Others see it as healing, a bridge for those who otherwise have no one. From nursing homes to classrooms, from airports to living rooms, humanoids are moving into spaces we once thought were strictly human. And as they do, the question is no longer, what can robots do? It's becoming, what can't they do? When we talk about humanoid robots, it's easy to focus on the excitement, machines that can talk, walk, and even comfort people. But behind that excitement is a reality that makes many uneasy, jobs. Every time a robot takes on a human task, it raises the question, who gets replaced? And in 2026, this question is becoming urgent. Think first about caregiving. Around the world, millions of people work in nursing homes, private homes, and hospitals. It's exhausting work, often underpaid, but it provides steady employment. Now picture humanoid robots stepping into those same roles, helping patients, lifting them safely, reminding them of medications, or even sitting to talk. A single robot might replace two or three workers. For families, it's affordable and reliable. For workers, it could mean lost livelihoods. Then look at receptionists and front desk staff. Hotels, offices, and clinics rely on friendly faces to greet visitors, answer questions, and handle scheduling. But a humanoid robot, always polite, never sick, never distracted, can perform the same role. In Japan and South Korea, some hotels already use robots at the check-in desk. In airports, humanoids are guiding passengers and answering questions in multiple languages. If that trend spreads, entire industry Industries of entry-level jobs could shrink. Customer service is another sector at risk. Today, most of us have dealt with automated phone systems or online chatbots. But humanoid robots push this further. Imagine walking into a store and asking for help, only to be greeted by a lifelike machine that can answer product questions, process returns, and even upsell you without ever losing patience. For businesses, 
its efficiency. For employees, its displacement. Education also faces disruption. A humanoid tutor that can adapt to each student's learning pace could make class sizes larger with fewer human teachers. Schools under budget pressure may see robots not as assistants, but as replacements. And while many argue robots can't match human empathy, the temptation to cut costs often outweighs deeper concerns. L. The ripple effects go beyond single industries. If robots take over roles in caregiving, customer service, education, and hospitality, millions of people could be pushed out of work. That's not just unemployment, it's inequality. Wealthy companies that own and deploy the robots get richer, while workers without new skills fall behind. Society is forced to rethink what work even means. Some argue that just like past technology shifts, tractors replacing farmhands, computers replacing typists, new jobs will emerge. And that may be true, but this time feels different. Humanoid robots aren't just tools. They are direct substitutes for human presence. They don't just help us, they compete with us. The job revolution is no longer theoretical. It's already unfolding. And unless society finds a balance, we may discover that the biggest winners of this robot age are not workers, but the companies building the machines. Walk into a therapy office in 2026, and you might not find a human sitting across from you. Instead, you could be face to face with a humanoid robot. Its voice is calm, its expression attentive, and its sensors are scanning your emotions in real time. This is not science fiction. It is the future of mental health support, and it is is coming faster than most people ever imagined. For millions of people, mental health care is out of reach, therapy is expensive, and access is limited. Many live in areas with few or no trained professionals. Robots could step into that gap. Imagine a machine that never cancels an appointment, never judges you, and is available at any hour of the day. For someone battling loneliness, grief, or anxiety, that kind of presence could be life-saving. Advanced humanoid robots can already detect subtle shifts in tone, posture, and facial expression. If your voice cracks while talking about a painful memory, the robot notices. If your body slumps with sadness, the robot responds. With machine learning, it can adapt to you personally, learning your triggers, patterns, and coping styles. Over time, it could guide you through personalized therapy sessions, offering exercises, reminders, and even comforting words when you need them most. Picture a widow sitting alone in her living room. Nights feel unbearable. A robot companion is there, not just to keep her company but to recognize her grief and gently encourage her toward healing. Or a veteran struggling with PTSD. A humanoid therapist could help them practice breathing techniques, walk through flashbacks, and track progress daily. These aren't far-off ideas, they are being tested right now. But here's the danger, robots can imitate empathy, but can they truly feel it? A human therapist brings lived experience, compassion, and the ability to connect through shared humanity. A robot can simulate warmth, but it does not understand suffering the way people do. Critics warn that relying too much on machines for emotional support risks hollowing out what makes therapy powerful, real human connection. There is also a moral risk. If someone vents anger at a robot, does that behavior carry over into real relationships? If people bond with robots, instead of humans, could it deepen isolation rather than cure it? Researchers like Dr. Kathleen Richardson argue that replacing human intimacy with artificial companionship could erode the foundations of society itself. Still, supporters insist robots don't need to replace therapists. They can extend care. Think of them as mental health first responders. A robot could stabilize someone in crisis until they reach a human professional. It could provide daily support, reminders, and coping strategies, while humans step in for deeper treatment. Together, the two could reach more people than ever before. In the end, the question is not whether robots will be used in mental health, they already are. The question is how far we let them go, and whether we are ready to accept comfort from something that looks human. When machines begin to look, act, and even feel like us, the real challenge is no longer technical, it is ethical. By 2026, the rise of lifelike humanoid robots has opened a set of questions humanity has never faced before, not about how to build them, but about how to live with them. Let's start with a simple but unsettling scenario. Imagine someone shouting at, insulting, or even hitting a humanoid robot. To the outside eye, it looks like abuse. The robot might even flinch, frown, or show sadness. But here's the dilemma. It is not a person, it cannot feel pain, and yet, the act looks disturbingly human. Philosopher Catherine Milhorn warns that violence toward robots could normalize aggression. If people practice Practice cruelty on machines, what stops those behaviors from spilling into real human interactions? Privacy is another minefield. To act human, robots must gather data, your face, your voice, your emotions, even your daily routines. If that data is stored, who owns it? Could governments or corporations access it? Imagine a robot therapist recording your deepest secrets, only for those files to be leaked or sold potential for misuse is staggering. The question of identity also comes into play. If a robot is designed to copy a specific person, a celebrity, a loved one, even someone who has passed away, is that ethical? Is it a tribute or a form of exploitation? Could grieving families use humanoids to keep the dead alive? And if so, what does that do to the grieving process? Then there's employment. As robots become capable of caregiving, teaching, and customer service, millions of jobs could vanish. This isn't just an economic challenge, it's a moral one. What responsibility do we have to workers displaced by machines? And 
do we risk creating a society where efficiency is valued over human dignity? Supporters argue that ethical concerns should not freeze progress. They believe robots will enhance life, not diminish it. They say that with the right rules, robots can handle dangerous, tedious, or emotionally draining work, freeing humans for creativity, connection, and purpose. The skeptics reply, maybe. But once the line between human and machine is blurred, it may never be drawn again. The deeper dilemma is this. Do we want robots that are indistinguishable from people? Or is there wisdom in keeping a visible boundary? If that line disappears, we may wake up in a world where we cannot always tell who is real and who is programmed to pretend. Thank you for watching and spending your time with us today. The future of robots is no longer science fiction. It's unfolding right in front of our eyes. By 2026, lifelike machines could be shaping work, relationships, even the way we understand love and human connection. But the real question remains, how will we as a society choose to use them? Will they be partners, helpers, or replacements? That answer depends on us. If you found this video thought-provoking, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and share it with someone who should watch this video. Your voice truly matters here.